français et je, et je tiens sincèrement à m'excuser en français pour, pour cette déclaration. Alors, Bombardier, avion d'affaires, aimerait exprimer nos sincères condoléances à nos collègues chez Dassault Aviation suite au décès de, de M. Serge Dassault. So, thank you again, everyone. Again, I'll repeat it in English. Bombardier Business Aircraft would like to express, express our sincere condolences to our colleagues at Dassault Aviation following uh, the loss of one of their founding partners yesterday. So without further ado, uh, we'll start uh, our brief agenda for today. So we will have uh, our leaders from the party business aircraft aftermarket network, who uh, will all introduce one by one, and then they'll occupy their seats uh, as a reward for brief remarks. <laughs> so we have uh, Jean-Christophe Gallagher, who's the vice president and general manager of uh, Bombardier Customer Experience. We have Andy Nereddin, who's the vice president of customer response for Bombardier Business Aircraft, and Bill Malloy, the vice president for aftermarket sales, uh, in, also for Bombardier Business Aircraft, of course. So without further ado, we'll start with a brief video, followed by remarks, a Q&A session, and a photo opportunity that will invite you to gather around the, the front table. So I'll play the video, and JC will take the stage. trucks to about 23 mobile units. 
As you can see here, the latest additions uh, in the United States. We've also added one station uh, in Teterboro and soon in Van Nuys, two very busy business aviation uh, hubs uh, in North America. We continue to invest in this very important region here in Europe, uh, and we just uh, announced our Luton line maintenance facility, and we continue to invest heavily in the assets and the people and tools in Cannes, Nice, Linante, Linz, and we're continuing to look at additional locations uh, around the region. In addition to the, to the Challenger 300 that we will be deploying by the end of the year, we'll be able to interplay the, the, the trucks, technicians, and uh, the, the access to our, our parts depot here in, in Europe to respond very quickly and efficiently to this region, uh, not only in, in Central Europe, uh, but also Northern Europe, Russia, uh, as far away as the Middle East and Northern Africa. It's a model that has worked well for us and we continue to expand that and evaluate additional locations. Uh, as GC mentioned, we continue to also uh, look at other opportunities for, uh, for investment in products and locations to bring your jets uh, back home. And to tell us more about this, I'm uh, pleased to introduce Bill Malloy, our Vice President of Aftermarket Sales. Bill? So good morning everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, as you can see, many of the Bombardier team are walking around with a permanent grin on their face this week. We're very, very proud of what we've announced from a product uh, launch perspective. But we're also very, very proud of what we're doing in the aftermarket. And I just want to talk about some of the things that we're doing uh, with respect to that. So as, as JC and, uh, and Andy have mentioned, we've made uh, numerous enhancements to our aftermarket uh, capabilities. And I just want to just want to draw on some of those uh, as it relates to our service center network. So Big and Hill opened just over a year ago. Um, I'm delighted to say that uh, we doubled the capacity uh, more recently in that facility, and uh, we're winning more and more work into that facility. And I know we're making uh, really great improvements uh, to satisfy our customers. Likewise, uh, Tianjin uh, in mainland China. Uh, now be registered. Uh, we've started to see major inspections going through there on be registered aircraft. We're currently in the process of uh, attaining FAA certification, and the ASA certification will, will follow. In Singapore, we very much see the Singapore facility as, as one of our flagship facilities uh, in, uh, in Asia Pacific. Uh, as you can see there, we've quadrupled the number of uh, of engineers and technicians that we have working down there. And um, it, it has uh, historically been one of those facilities where our uh, net promoter scores have been very, very positive. So we continue to do a lot of really good things out of the Singapore facility. And then just in, in, uh, in line with the enhancements uh, to our capabilities, uh, we recently completed a significant investment in our Tucson service facility. Uh, where we've invested significantly in our in interior shop uh, so that we can do more and more interior work in, in that facility. So what does this all mean? Uh, what it means for us is, as the OEM and as a, an organization that's working to bring more and more of our jets home, uh, we're in a unique position where we can offer a plethora of products to our customers. In, in many respects, uh, products that only we can offer. So if you look at some of the uh, some of the things on this slide, you know, for example, on connectivity solutions, we sit down with our customers, we go through the options, uh, depending on their uh, on their trip profiles. Uh, we'll look at maybe KA band as being one of the fastest uh, connectivity solutions, or if their if the trip uh, profile uh, dictates, we'll maybe look at uh, air to ground with, uh, with GoGo solutions. In regards to cabin refurbishments, we're in a very unique position where we can bring, in many respects, the uh, people that designed the original cabin to sit down and consult with our customers, say during a 10-year inspection, to talk about what are the latest uh, in, in colors, in schemes, in configurations as it pertains to a cabin, cabin refurbishment. We can also add in things like premier seating, cabin seating, uh, hard flooring, and, and so on. Around avionics, of course, uh, you know, if we look at the, uh, the challengers, uh, we're looking very much at the Proline 21 Advance. 
uh, as being something that's been very, very popular. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest and, and a lot of installations on that. And then, of course, on, on the global, uh, we look at the, um, uh, the flight display uh, upgrades through DU-875s. So these are all things that we offer um, that, um, in many respects, are, are unique to what Bombardier uh, brings to the table. And it's all centered around bringing our jets home, primarily because we believe we're best um, uh, suited to support our own aircraft. And just to kind of uh, round things off, just to, to, to complete the, how we're trying to make sure that um, we offer a complete service, is that we recognize that providing airframe support by itself is, is not always enough. So what we've recently done is we've added capability to be able to do engine maintenance support uh, on the Challenger 300 and 350s, on the HDF engines. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to marry the airframe and the engine so that our customers have, have one visit. Uh, and this is proving very, very popular. We just launched this recently and we're already starting to see a lot of interest. So I'd like to hand back to, to Mark Maslick. Uh, so, thank you, Bill and the MJC. So, for those in the room, uh, the usual drill uh, my colleague uh, Anna has the microphone. So, just uh, quick questions with uh, your name and publication, and uh, we'll follow that with the photo opportunity. So, I turn it over to you. Just a question on these maintenance control centers. I mean, what, what's the function of these centers and why is one located in Linz? <laughs> good question, good question. So the way our support works, of course, 24 seven, is people call uh, one central number in our customer response center, which happens to be in Montreal. Uh, and from there, we are able to dispatch depending on the region, and of course the certification base is the required mobile units and technicians and parts. So uh, for the continental United States, of course our uh, maintenance control center is located in Wichita, where we have uh, a big service center and the bulk of our expertise. And uh, in Europe, uh, our maintenance control center is, is in Linz, following the acquisition of a well-known organization that we have made last year. So that would ex that's what explains uh, that particular Tony Harrington, Business Aviation Magazine. Uh, what are the implications for the customer of you dispatching one of the aircraft to carry their comp today? So, the first thing I'd like to say is, you know, over the years, um, we've seen the reliability of Bombardier aircraft uh, get better and better on all of our platforms. And right now, we're at all time highs in terms of reliability on Learjet's Challenger and Globals. But when we do have an aircraft in need in a location that's far away from either one of our service centers or where we have a, uh, an existing mobile unit, what we do is we dispatch this airplane not only with the parts from the main hub, but also with the required technicians and expertise on board to be able to perform this, insta this installation at the airfield where the airplane is located. I was thinking of the cost implication. I'm sorry? Sorry, I was thinking of the cost implications. Could you say a word on that? So, so it depends on the particular situation, but of course, uh, we're always finding the best possible solution for our customers in terms of how we support them in these different situations. All right, so if there's no further questions, I'd invite everyone with the camera to just gather around the channel here, and we'll invite uh, our three leaders for a little opportunity.